All right, everybody, let's uh, work on the next part of this activity, which has to do with uh, eclipses. And there's two types of eclipses, uh, lunar and solar eclipses. And let's start out by taking a look at the lunar eclipse, which is exercise two here. And we're going to go to uh, Bandurma, Turkey, uh, to see this lunar eclipse. Lunar eclipses are something that we can see here in Goshen, uh, and they do occur from time to time. I just happened to make this uh, for this date and time in uh, Bandurma, Turkey. So uh, I'm going to click copy paste and go to Stellarium. And we're going to switch the location to Turkey. So I'm going to go to Bandurma, Turkey. Click on that. Okay, there it is. Use this location. So now we're seeing the sky in Turkey. And if we have to we uh, are going to go back here and get the right date and time. So this lunar eclipse occurred in 2011 on June 15th. So I'm going to have to change my date and time to 2011, June 15th. So there's 2011, June 15th. And the time to, you know, again, this is in military time, 1344.56. So now we're going to go here. Um, we're going to go to 1344. The seconds don't really matter, um, but we'll do it proper. 1344.56, I think was the time. Yeah. Okay. And then it says, look toward the east. What is the moon phase? So now we're going to start looking around. There's west, Mercury. You know, something kind of interesting about Mercury. Uh, when I asked you guys to go outside and, and look at the stars uh, with star charts and so on, a lot of people said they saw Mercury. Very unlikely. Uh, Mercury is very small. It's hard to see without a telescope. And you're always going to see Mercury right after the sun sets or right before the sun rises in the morning because Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. So you're not gonna find Mercury in the middle of the night. You're gonna find Mercury at uh, sunrise and sunset because of its proximity to the sun. Anyway, let's keep looking. There's north and there's our moon a little bit southeast to the southeast. And if I zoom in on that a little bit, we can see it's in a full moon phase. And one of the main ideas with a lunar eclipse is that it has to occur during a full moon. You're never going to have a lunar eclipse in a crescent phase. You're only going to have lunar eclipses in a full moon, no other phase, no gibbous or quarter moons or anything like that, only full. So uh, here's our full moon. And that's the answer to number one. And it says slowly fast forward through the night and describe the changes that occur to the moon throughout the night. So if I come to here and I fast forward through time, we can see there's there's our moon right there. Now, uh, let me just check one thing here. I accidentally uh, switched the day when I changed my time. So that's just something to watch out for. Hey, uh, anyway, uh, it's got to be on June 15th. We're going to keep going. And now we can see this change to the moon. That's where our lunar eclipse is occurring. So a lunar eclipse happens relatively quickly, and I'm going to slow down the time, and we can see this kind of reddish-brown line beginning to cover up our lunar eclipse. And if I keep going and adding time, we can see that the moon is gradually becoming more and more covered in this reddish-brown shadow. This is Earth's shadow being cast onto the moon. And one of the things that we talked about back in September was that this shadow is good evidence that the Earth is round. We can see this curved line to this shadow. Well, a shadow takes the shape of the object. And if we see a curved line on the lunar surface, well, then that indicates the Earth has to be round, right? So if I keep advancing time, whoops, I went too far. Eventually, we'll reach a point where uh, the moon gets completely covered in Earth's shadow. When we've reached that point where the Earth is completely, or when the Moon is completely covered in Earth's shadow, that's a point called totality, and that's where it's completely dark. 
totality is kind of interesting if you've ever experienced it, because one of the things that's really cool about totality is it allows us to see stars near the moon that we normally would never be able to. The sky is much darker than usual. Uh, and we can see stars that normally are difficult to see because of the bright light from the moon. So anyway, if we come back to here, uh, it says describe the changes that occur, uh, and you can figure that out for yourself. Um, it says what you are observing is a lunar eclipse. When the moon becomes completely darkened, is referred to as totality. Approximately what time does totality happen? So you're going to have to kind of scroll back and forth and try to decide when is the moon it's darkest, and that's totality. Okay, um, that, that's our totality point when the moon is completely dark. And approximately how long did the lunar eclipse last? Well, look at the moon and try to figure out, well, when did the shadow first appear? And when does the shadow go away? And look at the times, subtract, and figure out how long that lunar eclipse lasted for. For these questions five through seven, you can use this link right here. You can just copy and paste it into your web browser and uh, you'll find the answers uh, to these questions uh, there. Now we go to exercise three. Now we're gonna go to Australia. And back in 2012, there was a solar eclipse. And that's what we're gonna look at next. So now we're gonna go to Stellarium and we're gonna change our location to uh, Cairns, Australia. With Stellarium, you could go anywhere in the world. Now we're going to go to Australia. There we go. Use this location. And now we're in Australia. Uh, so let's see what's next. We have to get the right date and time. 2012, 11, 13. So let's do the date first. 2012, 11, says November and the 13th of November in 2012. And now what we're going to do is go to the time of 145.14 or 1345.14. And just watch out um, when you change your time that you don't accidentally end up changing the day. I did that uh, for the lunar eclipse. And I caught it, but um, that could be confusing for you if you don't notice that. Okay, so 1345, 13, or 14, but that's only one second. That's not going to make a difference, but we'll do it. There we go. Okay. And now it says, look towards the east and slowly fast forward to watch the sunrise. So now we're going to look to the east. West, wrong way, east. There's Saturn setting, or rising rather. Uh, you know, again, uh, planets, the moon rise in the east, move across the sky, and set in the west. Okay, so um, now I'm going to advance time. Sun's rising. There it is there. And unfortunately, this window is kind of covering it up a little bit. But what we see is as the sun's rising, there's this uh, shadow being cast on the sun. And now Earth's shadow, or the, the shadow is getting cast onto um, the sun. And it's covering up the sun. And when we reach this point where the sun is completely covered up in shadow, we've reached what's called totality. And there's totality there. And if you've ever experienced a solar eclipse, it's, it's quite rare where we live. Uh, but... Um, it'll be dark in the middle of the day. So you'll have day and then all of a sudden, just for a brief period of time, it'll be nighttime. And that even allows us to see constellations that normally wouldn't be visible in the daytime because of the sunlight. Well, if the sunlight's getting blocked, then uh, you can see constellations you wouldn't normally be able to see. The air temperature drops because it gets dark. And this is relatively short. Uh, totality for a uh, solar eclipse does not last very long. And now we can see the sun. You can still see the uh, the shadow there, but it's uh, not completely covering the sun anymore. It's only partially covering the sun. And as time goes by, we'll eventually see the separation of the shadow and the sun. And 
they're starting to move further and further apart. The shadow's not directly on top of the sun anymore. And eventually, they kind of split apart from each other. And there's the moon, moon shadow. Okay, so uh, anyway, um, that's the solar eclipse. Now, if we go back to the worksheet here, uh, basically, it's just asking you to describe it, figure out how long it lasted. And then there's, again, a link with some descriptions of these terms and so on. And uh, you can find the answers to uh, three through eight in this link here when you go to that website. Okay, so um, hopefully that explains it. You know, again, if you have questions or you have trouble, uh, let me know. Uh, again, though, watch out for those dates. If you cross past midnight, you're going to change the day accidentally, and that's going to throw you off a little bit. So just something to think about. Okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, that should wrap that up. If you have questions, let me know.